there is a fairly amazing consequence of the fact that the halting problem is not solvable. And that is, in plain language, but without being too misleading, there are true statements about the world, in particular about integers, that cannot be proven. This is called Gödel's incompleteness theorem, spelled like this. And now that we know about the halting, pr the halting problem, it's actually not that hard to prove, amazingly. Gödel, of course, Kurt, Kurt Gödel, the Austrian mathematician, spent a lot of time and effort on proving it, and a lot of that effort actually went into inventing progr programming. Gödel had to invent programming in order to prove the theorem, basically, and he invented something that's not nearly as convenient as Python. We have Python, so it's easier for us. So here's the gist of the proof. Let's say, again, assume that any true statement can be proven. Seems innocuous enough. Now, here is what we will deduce from it. We will deduce that we can write hold. But we cannot write hold, we just proved that, which means that this must be false. So here's how we're going to go about doing this. We're going to say, OK, let's try to write hold using this assumption. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go through all strings of all length over the Latin alphabet. We can do this. I showed you how to do that when we wrote the Fermat function. Now, if we go through all the strings of all the lengths over the Latin alphabet, well, most of it will just be nonsense. Some of it will make sense. Some of it will even be sensible English. Some of it will be the text of Hamlet. Some of it will be the text of Twilight, right? It will also contain proofs. In particular, it will contain both attempted proofs and attempted disproofs of the fact that f holds on x for any f and any x. You would just define the f and you would define the x. So let's say that the strings are s. So here we're, we have a for loop. We go through all the strings and we say check if s is the proof that f holds on x. Also check if s is the proof that f does not hold on x. And well, f either holds on x or it does not hold on x. So if anything that's true is provable, well, we'll either find a proof that f holds on x or we'll find a proof that f does not hold on x. Either way, we will have solved the halting problem for the function f on input x. But we proved that we cannot do that. This is legit, and you can kind of trust me that it's kind of possible to believe that you can write the program that checks if something is a proof of something. That's easy. Okay? The wrong assumption was this. It's not the case that you can prove that proof, uh, that you can find a proof for any true statement. There are true statements which nevertheless cannot be proven. That's, that's how it is. I cannot give you an example of such a statement for a very obvious reason. 
if I say that the statement is true but cannot be proven, I have to prove both of those assertions. But the property of the statement is that you cannot prove it, so you would never be convinced that it's actually true because I couldn't possibly produce a proof for the fact that it's true. However, it is a true fact that those statements are out there. They would be of the form that, you know, something holds on its own, uh, on its own, on its own program or something like that. It wouldn't be statements that are generally interesting, but they are out there. That's kind of an amazing fact.